Ride through the city like Brennan Shaw. I'm on a mission to get it all. Ride through the city like Brennan Shaw. If you ain't thick, please don't get involved. And now, Brandon Thick Boy Shaw. What is happening, Thickies? It is January 17th, Monday. And it is a big ass UFC week. We got UFC 270 this mother trucking Saturday. It's going down for the biggest, baddest belt on the planet Earth. We're talking about the heavyweight championship belt in the UFC. You got Francis Ngannou, Cyril Ghosn. It's going down on Saturday. I can't freaking wait. We also, we got the Calabas fight campaign with the boys, Brian Callen, Chris D'Elia. That is live only on the Thick Boy YouTube. We will be live at 7 p.m. Pacific for the main card. Tune in. Watch this monster of a main event. Rest of the card, we can lie to you guys. Not a monster, but the main event, the co-main, Bram Moreno, my boy, Bram Moreno versus Figueroa. What's popping, daddy? Rest of the cards not going to blow your dick off, but uh, the main event, co-main event are worth the money. Now, they did. Uh, I'm sure Jin will have it in current events, but they did uh, increase the price on ESPN, which isn't cool. But uh, How much money do you need, ESPN? Jesus Christ. Even Dana was like, I don't <clears> like when they do that. Yeah. I wonder if they even ask him. But uh, great weekend, man. Great weekend. Uh, it's good to be back in the – Thick boy headquarters here. We had a busy one. You know, I knew, <clears throat> I told the team in December, I said, uh, you know, December, we're still with Showtime, you know, still on their platform. And, you know, we're kind of doing our own thing, figuring things out, start doing companions on our own. But I said, the real work begins in January. And boy, I was not lying. Everybody's overworked, including myself. You got, uh, we shot our first uh food truck diary on the thick boy network with my team uh which you know used to be a showtime product but this is the first one on the thick boy platform so that will drop when are we doing that wednesday we drop it wednesday with sugar sean o'malley one of my favorite people um absolutely love the kid for multiple reasons but yeah flew him in uh he stayed in venice and then uh, we did the food truck, and then we also did the classic uh, Calabas fight campaign where me and Sugar Sean sit down and watch kind of his three most influential fights in his career, and that will also drop in January. So uh, a lot's going on, man. And then we also added a new kind of wrinkle to the food truck where uh, I partnered up with my boys in Suplex in Philly, where I get all my kicks from. Uh, Suplex in Philly, my boy Mike out there. Because every food truck, I give the fighter a shoe that I think represents them. And uh, Sugar Sean, Sugar, yeah, Sugar Sean got a good one. Sugar Sean got a really good shoe. Uh, I won't spoil it, but he got a fucking. I've never seen him in person, and now I really want them. They are fire. And, and uh, to be honest. I knew like he's obviously a fashion guy he has his unique style with his hair and all the chains and shit that he wears. But I thought I'd be like, Oh, thanks dude. These are cool. But he was stoked. He was super stoked on these kicks. So, uh, it's a good time, man. On the, the classic fight companion. We also have, have a little whiskey as well. And it's just, uh, I get to talk to him for freaking hours, man. He's, he's one of the best. And that, uh, that drops uh, Wednesday, man. Hopefully you guys dig it. Hopefully you guys dig it. Because my team running this bad boy now. So we put a lot of effort into it. So you're going to enjoy on Wednesday the uh, first food truck on the Thick Boy Network. And it's with uh, my boy, Sugar. And, uh, yeah, he's just a great dude, man. Just a really good dude. Uh, outside that, uh, Chris D'Elia, first um, dates on the books in, I think, two and a half years. He did his first full weekend at Levity Live in Oxnard, and uh, he had his boys come out and open up for him. He had uh, King Botch. Is it Botch or Bach? King Bach, Bach. Bach. I think it's Bach. Is King it Bach? Bach yeah. King Bach. I didn't know if it was Bach or Bach, so I just kept calling him King, which mm. was uh, <laughs> when he left, Chris goes, hey, it's weird to keep calling him King as a grown man. I was like, is it Bach or Bach? So, uh, he, uh, you know, I've never met him before. He's fucking funny, man. He's super, super big on social media. Like, he has a ton of followers, I'm sure. Yeah, I, you know, 
well, I didn't realize how, uh, how, how you know, I, I, I just didn't realize, you know, obviously he's, he's big off of, uh, yeah. Was it vine and shit like that? And Something like that. all that stuff. And then he obviously has the commercial, I think with, uh, Carl's jr or whatever, but he, uh, the thing about King is he, um, he, he was doing stand up before he blew up on while and out. Like he was big. He, he was doing the stand up grind and obviously got famous from Wiling out and all that stuff and his social media, but he's a comic, uh, at heart. So, you know, I didn't know either. I'm, I'm a fucking comic, man. I'm around all the time, but I, d I didn't really know. He opens up for Joe Coy. You know that he opens up for mm -hmm. Joe Coy now. So, um, you know, Joe Coy's not going to have just any schmuck open up for him. Like King's a beast, man. So I asked Chris, I was like, yeah, I've seen him on Wiling out stuff. I it's one of my favorite shows, but is he, uh, is like stand up wise. And Chris like, Oh dude. Yeah, man. He started as a stand up man. I was like, really? He's like, yeah. So uh, I went out and watched his show, and he's a fucking killer, man. He's good. He was really good. He's a monster. Super nice guy, too. Really, really nice guy. Down to earth. Uh, yeah, he's a monster. But it, it was just good to see Chris out there. I think he got a stand ovation. He had five shows. He got a stand ovation for all five. And uh, yeah, man, it was good to see Chris. I've never seen him happier, man. His wife was back there. Brian came Saturday night. Awesome. Um, yeah, I'm sure we'll talk about finding a kid, but yeah, it was great. Someone said, quad damn it, Chris looks like a child. Yeah, my legs are way bigger than Chris's, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, well, I also work out a lot more than Chris, so there's that. But uh, yeah, it was a great weekend at Oxnard. Oxnard is weird because I played there their opening night, I think six years ago, five years ago, and they, the manager who ran it was just a nightmare. And I was like, I'll never be back. And I literally told my agent, I'm like, never get me an offer from Oxnard ever again, ever. He's like, really? like one of the worst rent clubs I've ever been to. So I've, I haven't done it. So when Chris asked me, I'm like, dude, that levity lie? Like, it's a nightmare. He's like, when's the last time you played there, dude? I was like, the opening weekend is, no, 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 it's a beast now. He ain't lying. It's great. Awesome. They've done way better, man. So, yeah, it was great, man. It was great. Had the kids all day. Baby mama was uh, at a wedding. So I had the kids solo on Saturday and Sunday. Took them to the park. And, uh, yep, you got that Sonic ice cream. You know the little Mexican vendors? They have all sorts yeah. of ice creams. They fucking love them. Here's the problem. Don't, this is uh, daddy lesson number one for you new dads out there. Uh, don't dress your kids in light colors and then stroll the park and give them super colorful <laughs> ice cream. My tiger shirt was completely destroyed. Boston's was covered in that fucking whatever that popsicle is. I don't even know what creepy fucking popsicle that is. <laughs> it is, is creepy, dude. It says comic on it eyes are creepy the yeah clown face. it's like some fucking clown on fentanyl but he enjoyed it mm -hmm. that's him being like get off of me dude Look how big fucking their hands are it's great man tiger's mouth he looks insane <laughs> what, what can you do uh yeah man so I'm, I'm just excited that we have a big ass uh ufc oh you also got the post yeah thick mutters fuck is that next saturday yeah a uh, next saturday yeah. boy better step up his training well, that's that's fair, Shane Garrett Binding. He goes, which diet are you sticking to for two weeks now, homie? That's completely fair, sir. I do different diets all the time. I've been on, I mean, I, I guess technically you would call it the carnivore diet, uh, which, I, you know, Rogan was doing. We, we had a conversation about it. I'm like, just meat, though, dude. And then I got to be honest, man, it's the easiest diet I've ever had to stick to. I feel fantastic. I'm down nine pounds. Um it's just easy. You eat like a fucking big cat at the zoo. Super easy. Anything that a fucking tiger would eat at the zoo, you don't eat. And then obviously, because my teeth are so sensitive, not cavities in your face, dentist. Not cavities, my teeth are so sensitive. I can't have sugar, so my body's not even craving sugar. So no, daddy doesn't even want sugar now. It's just red meat. And you can have chicken stuff. I'm not even fucking with chicken or turkey, or pork, none of that. I'm just red you get bored meat, just meat all the time. I'm telling you, like, would a fucking lion eat chicken or pork? <laughs> nah, bro. It's red meat. I'm like, at, before I came here, I had a ribeye. I had a ribeye. I had two ribeyes yesterday and like five uh, beef patties. That's my diet. I'm not even hungry either. I'm never, I have to like force myself to eat it. It's crazy. Now, I, is it sustainable? I don't know. I don't know. Am I going to look like Jared Love in three months if I stick with it? Probably. I'm not going to lie to you. Eyes might change to fucking blue or whatever, green or whatever it is there. But um, 
yeah, I don't. It's been super easy for me, man. And then Rogan was talking about how he take he eats uh, he added fruit into his so to better workouts. I'm not even fucking with fruit, Daddy. You ever seen a lion in the zoo eat fucking <laughs> grapes? Fruit? Never. They eat that raw red meat, son. That's what I'm doing. So we'll see. Uh, biked almost 40 miles yesterday. No issue. My mental uh, clarity is fantastic. I'm never hungry. No cravings. Losing weight. Workouts have been good. So we'll see. Yeah, there's 10 spots left. Uh, it's next Saturday, January 29th. It's Lake Elsinore. Mm -hmm. It's Orange County. They say Los Angeles, and I also promote Los Angeles. And you think I'd look into it more, but I didn't. But uh, it's, it's definitely not LA, is it? It's about an uh, hour and a half, hour 45 from here. It's Orange County. It's in the sticks of Orange County. And uh, the whole squad's running, man. So there's 10 spots left to run to the Thick Boy squad. You got Brian Callen, Chappelle Lacey. My boy Casey's doing it. You got freaking uh, Big J Shab is doing it. You got Christian Meatball doing it. And I think we've had over 50 other thick fans sign up for it. So there's 10 spots left, man. Um, you know what? We didn't want just a bunch of thickies running this <laughs> thing. You know, they were like, well, let's limit to some people. So there's 10 left. And that was yesterday. So who knows if it's still available. But that is 10 a.m. next Mother Truck and Saturday, man. I'm excited for it. It's going to be a great time. Uh, let's get to some fights, though. Obviously, all I want to talk about is Francis Cyril gone, but we can't because I told you guys you were going to get a great fight on Saturday night uh, in Calvin Cater versus uh, your boy Giga. So, oh, how do I want to jump with this? I, I would say I was surprised. Um, you know, Calvin's been on the show multiple times. I absolutely love Calvin, and he's from, you know, the New England cartel. Uh, the Winter Hill Gang boys out there in Boston. Shout out to Whitey Bulger. But um, yeah, I, I I really thought this would be a tougher fight for Calvin. I I thought uh, if he was going to pressure Giga, his legs were going to get tore up. I thought Giga was the more crisp striker. Um, clearly on defeating the UFC seven zero for a reason. It wasn't crazy about the matchup for Calvin, especially after the Max Holloway fight. Mm -hmm. But Jesus Christ, how fucking tough is Calvin Cater? He, I mean. Giga didn't win around it. The the 50-44, I'm I'm with you, man. Yeah, that was that fight was not close at all. And the the timing of his elbows and the spinning back fists, and he beat the shit out of Giga. I mean, it, that fight was not that competitive. It was a uh a slobber knocker, but because Calvin Cater made it that way. You know, he he was trying to take him out of there. He couldn't do it. Shows you how freaking tough Giga is. Giga's gonna be fine. He, he has world champion written all over him, and maybe a loss is good for him. But uh, you know, as he got tired, I, I think he was surprised at how A, how hard Calvin hit, B, the pressure Calvin, and then also C how the leg kicks with the distance and the pressure really fucked up his game plan, which I would assume was to to kick a lot more. But when Calvin scored that uh, takedown the first round and kind of, you know, didn't go for broke, wore Giga out, and then once he started landing shots on him, the, the cardio was an issue for Giga. So uh, shout to Calvin Kadar, man, right back in the queue for a title shot, right back <laughs> there. Because they're talking about, oh, if Giga wins, he's next. Well, where's Calvin? He beat the shit out of him. Yeah. I know he lost to Max Holloway, but, you know, Max is hurt. So Calvin completely redeemed himself, and he is right back in the queue for a title shot featherweight, man. He looked phenomenal. Phenomenal. Him is like his, like, so I was messaging with Tyson, his coach. Like, their game plan and just how they did everything together, it was, like, flawless, man. Everyone did good. The takedown like was great. Everything. The timing of the takedowns was great. And what he scored three takedowns to the, the, the two, the, there was two like main, main ones were like, holy shit. That when just, he slipped and he took advantage of it right away. Oh man. That changed everything too. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's what wore uh giga out. So shout out to him and mm -hmm. brand Roy, Roy Val got it done. A split decision. I did have him winning that, which is fine. Needed him to win that. But, uh, that was a good first fight in 2022, man. Just to wet your beaks for the big UFC this freaking weekend, man. Big UFC this weekend. God, if you're a football fan and UFC fan, things are popping right now. I know it sounds like a DraftKings ad. It's not. I'm just saying you got the wild card playoffs, which I watched fucking every game. And then you got, you know, the next tonight, my my Rams. Oh, listen, I'm from Denver, so I'm a Broncos fan. But in L.A., it's, you got to be a Rams fan. It's all they show. Rams are Chargers. I watch all their games. You get the Rams tonight versus Arizona, 
And then, uh, yeah, well, clearly the Cowboys do what they do best. They lose. And then uh, uh, freaking, uh, was it Dak, start blamed the refs. And they're like, hey, they're throwing trash. And he's like, it's just surprising fans would do that after all the hard work we put in. And then one of the uh, journalists like, well, no, they're throwing trash at the ref. And he's like, oh, that's fine. That's, that's cool. fine. And he's just getting freaking trashed for that, no pun intended. But, yeah, man, it's a great uh, week to be a fight sports fan in general dude i you know there's nothing better than playoff football and then also you got there's there's nothing bigger than the heavyweight title there's nothing like it and the ufc knows that and that's why you look at the rest of the car and again it's not going to knock your dick off but it doesn't matter you're paying the money for that main event fight man and that's why we're doing a freaking fight campaign for it i can't fucking wait i cannot wait i uh you know i think about francis and cyril Ghan a ton um, probably more than I should because I'm not fighting anymore. But, uh, you know, th th this, you know, I, I went on the rant last week and it, it was one of the clips. You didn't see it on how if you're a fight fan and you care about the fighters, you want Francis to win because what he's doing is history for fighters. Um, and it's very rare a guy will let a guy fight when he doesn't have an extended contract already uh, signed. It's very, very rare that they let him fight for the world heavyweight title and in hopes that they can come to a common ground and sign a contract extension after that. Knowing Francis and his team, they have no desire to re-sign with the UFC. Their plan is for Francis to knock out Cyril Ghosn and then go test free agency in hopes of getting the Tyson Fury, in hopes of getting a wilder fight and getting fuck you money. That's their plan. And I, I got to be honest, I'm surprised the UFC is open to it. I think they think they're going to figure out a contract, but I don't think they realize that the team at CAA has different plans unless they offer them some just insane deal. And I, I made this argument to, to Sugar when he was on Food Trick, which you guys are here on Wednesday. I, you know, I, I made the argument that Sugar represents himself, which is fine. Some guys do. I, I wouldn't advise it for a number of reasons, which I could get into later, but Sugar represents himself. And also Francis, and you'll see some of these other big names, you know, with the UFC discrepancy and the issues they have with the UFC, their model is not what it was five years ago. And these agents and managers are going off an old model where the UFC uh, was predicated on, on pay-per-view buys and superstars. Their model has changed. And for people not to realize that is insane to me because you've already lost at the negotiation table if you don't know what animal you're dealing with. And you can see it with UFC. Do, does UFC need stars to stay relevant? 100%. I'm not saying that. But the UFC doesn't need superstars to be profitable. Not anymore. You know, back in the day, it was all, you know, how many more pay-per-views was there and you know that's why connor made so much money and stuff like that and you know the brock lesnar and ronda rousey's of the world and anson silvas and biz bings and you know these these champions made all this money because it was predicated off a pay-per-view model well they've gone away from that and the biggest indicator too is just look at them charging more for you know to espn plus and even the pay-per-views going up so all the ufc cares about is fulfilling their espn contract and ESPN, listen, as much as you guys want to think that they're these huge fight fans and they know the game, they don't know shit. Just like when the UFC was Fox, I was working with Fox, I would beat with the head honchos. And they would bring up shit like, you think Chuck Liddell comes back? Uh, where's Brock Lesnar? If it, All they knew was Chuck, Brock, Conor McGregor. That's it. And that was when Conor was coming up. That was it, man. Outside that, they have no fucking clue what's going on. So, you know, ESPN, all they care is that the, the, that the UFC fulfills their obligation to them, which is 40-something fights a year, um, and they don't care who's on them. They don't care. So it gives the UFC more leverage, which is a shame, but it gives them more leverage to let guys walk. Because if this is five years ago, Francis ain't fighting for a world title without having a contract uh, negotiated. It ain't happening. They ne Usually they would no negotiate two fights before because you know and if you didn't they would throw you to the fucking wolverines you would get the worst matchups possible and that's them trying to teach you a lesson but it's also them trying to devalue you where if you were to lose when you go to free agency it kind of fucks you over so you'd have to play ball with them 
we're just living a different time. We're living a different time. I think agents and managers need to realize that. And there, it's not going to work for everybody. This is my uh, rant to Sugar, and I, you know, I talked to CA this morning. My rant to them was, you know, the UFC is going to be fine without Francis. The UFC is fine without John Jones. The UFC moved on from Ronda Rousey. The UFC is fine without Amanda Nunes. The UFC is fine without, you know, name insert any Henry Cejudo, and the, and I'm sure it's in your current events, Jen, but that's why the UFC doesn't, they don't budge. Like with Henry Cejudo, they, they're not even open to it. Like how much does he want? We're good. As long as Volkanovski fights somebody and fulfills his obligations, we fulfill the ESPN, we're good. We're not going to fork out more money for a guy. It's just, that's their business model. Kudos to them. It's smart that they're not, you know, banking on them having superstars, superstars all the time. But back to Francis, you have to be an, and this is why you want Francis to win this fight. It's not that I don't like Cyril Gunn. I actually said he was going to be champ, I think, two years ago, if you go back and let's blow the belt. You, his movement and how technical he is and his athletic ability, he's an outlier amongst outliers at the heavyweight uh, division. He's an absolute nightmare for anyone. Not a knockout artist, and I think that might hurt him in the long run. But, again, the UFC doesn't care. But he, he's a guy who at heavyweight with his footwork and uh, he's so technical he's gonna outclass most of these guys and it's you know it's not gonna be these crazy highlights on espn stuff like that he's just gonna win it's gonna be very difficult to beat I said that two years ago so here we are he's fighting for a title shot the reason you should cheer for francis is to be because he's an outlier and because again this morning i'm sure you guys woke up saw the news that jake paul made 40 million dollars he says that's actually uh undervalued of how much he made this year Whatever it is, 40, 50, 60 million, doesn't matter. If it if it was 15 million, he's making more than most UFC fighters. So by more, I mean all of them besides Connor. So my thing here is Francis is an outlier. Again, it's not going to work for everybody. There's there's five, and I, I, I list them off last week, but there's about five or six guys who can do this. But what Jake, say what you want about Jake Paul, but what he's done to shed light on how much power there is in controlling your own destin destin destiny and banking on yourself and taking your career into your own hands and not banking on the machine of the UFC, you know, they see these huge numbers that Jake Paul's doing. And it's it's giving guys like Francis, like Maz Vidal, like the Diaz brothers, like Conor McGregor, an insight going, oh, I I could probably do this on my own and take all the money instead of using a middleman, the UFC, I can make life-changing money, which I'm deserved. And every, every fight in the UFC should have life-changing money for what they're, they're doing. They should, that's not the way the business model works. And you know, that's not realistic, but there's five guys who can do it. Francis, one of those guys. And this is, he can only do it if he wins on Saturday night. And this is why I want him to win. Because if he wins, again, you're talking about, uh, a crossover fight with Tyson Fury and Tyson Fury's, you know, even promoting it, talking about it. And you're talking 30, 40 million dollars for Francis. Do you not want to see a UFC guy stick it to the UFC? And I'm, you guys know this, I'm, I bleed UFC, man. I, one of the reasons I left Showtime so I don't have to cover other, other organizations. I am UFC alumni. I love the UFC. I love everything about the UFC. Nobody can compete with them. Nobody has the roster like them. Nobody's better at business than them. Nobody puts on a show like them. Nobody's smarter than them. It is what it is, man. Haters are going to hate. Everybody hates the guy at the top. That's why the UFC gets the shit that they get. But there's a reason for that because of the top dog. Do you not want to see a guy beat that system? And it's not that I want UFC to go away or you know to, to do bad or anything like that. I just want a guy in Francis who came from Africa of fucking working in diamond mines or sand mines, what the fuck he was doing, you know, and he's the heavyweight champion. He's one of the greatest knockout artists we've ever seen. I just want him to lead the path to show other guys at his level that you, there, there's something else. There's more out there for you. There's more. And it's so much more intriguing. His story is so much more intriguing if he does accomplish that because it's like, you remember the guy that broke the, I think it was a four minute mile. Remember that? And then a year, a year goes by and 20 people broke the four minute mile. Once humans realize, once fighters realize that they can do this, 
man, it's off to the races. And Francis can be that first guy. It's Jake Paul's Jake Paul shed light on it, but Jake Paul's not one of us. Jake Paul didn't go through the rankings of the UFC and through the hardship and dealing with negotiations and the Reebok deal and now the Venom deal and, you know, getting shit fights and fighting Abu Dhabi and just all the fucking bullshit you got to deal with being a professional athlete. Jake Paul didn't go through that, but he did shed light on if you do take ownership of your career and you are at that level, you can make so much more money, man. And what they're doing, you know, it's it's life threatening. You you know, you know, the end of uh, when you're at the tail end of your life, you're gonna suffer for what you did when you're in your 20s, 30s, and some 40s because you're getting punched in the face, and they're more than likely you're gonna have some form of brain trauma or slurred speech or you know back issues or knee issues. You should be compensated. So Francis needs to win on on fucking Saturday. Again, this isn't a knock on Sarah. I love Sarah. I think he's going to be champ. I just don't want to be champ on Saturday because I want Francis to win because it's going to pave the way for every other big name to go. Francis did it. And now think about it. Francis did it and he did it just based off skills. When's the last time you saw Francis give you a, a hot promo? When's the last time Francis did a fucking TikTok dance or fucking did some crazy thing on IG that went viral besides him just like, punching Ryan Garcia in the stomach or something like that. You know what I'm saying? He's He doesn't check all the boxes as far as being entertaining. Fucking Ferrari and Rolex isn't bending over backwards to sign Francis Ngannou. They're not. But because he's such a good fighter, because he's the face of the heavyweight division, and because he went, I'm going to bank on myself, There's there, you guys have to appreciate that. Even if you're from fucking France, you need to root for Francis Ngannou. Because if he fails at this, everybody's fucked. Then we don't have this lane. You want this lane. And it was started by Jake Paul. And even if you hate what he represents or that he didn't earn it or whatever, whatever weird thing you have in your head that makes you hate Jake Paul, you have to appreciate that he has shed light on something that nobody's ever been able to do. And if two years ago you would have told me Jake Paul would have been the pioneer to show us what these fighters are capable of doing i'm like you're jake paul's gonna do it he did it he did it and now we need one of our guys to do it because if one of our guys do it it's gonna be like the guy that broke the four minute mile there's gonna be a bunch of other people that break that fucking barrier and it starts with francis Ngannou on saturday night and boy does he have a tough task to do and that's what i think is so admirable that he's banking on himself man He's banging on himself, and everybody knows how the UFC works. If we were to lose this fight, that Fury fight probably goes out the window. He can test free agency, but um, maybe he'd make a little more if he signs with other organizations, but you're basically off into the ether and nobody cares. I'd love to see evidence or statistics that shows me one person that in the height of the UFC career left and be went on to become more famous and more relevant. I'll wait. Go. We can go through them if you want. I'm open to discussion. My guy at Starbucks who makes my drink always wants to argue with me. So if you have anything, dude, um, before you make my eight-shot espresso, think of it because I'll be there tomorrow morning. And I, you, I assume you represent the internet. I'd be down to argue that. Um, it's just the, the enormity of what Francis is doing and banking on himself is uh, it's a lot, man. And I fuck with those people. Yeah, he's called an outlier. He's banging on himself. Any entrepreneur has done it where you could have taken a big job somewhere for a corporation, but you're banking on yourself that you're going to be able to put the puzzle pieces together. And at the end, it's going to benefit you more and you're doing it your way. Well, Francis is doing it his way. And if you've ever been that person to get online or when you're watching the UFC fight, go, man, I wish I got paid more. You have to root for Francis, no matter how you feel about Cyril Gunn. You people in France that are watching this, I know it sucks. You want a French champion. Not right now. Not right now. The, the, the magnitude of what Francis represents is so much bigger than you having a champion from France. It's, bi it's bigger than this. This is bigger than the game, and it's very rare this happens. What happens on Saturday night if Francis wins is history. Not only being a 
heavyweight champion, it's history because he's going to go on and do something nobody's ever done. You should root for him. It's a tough fight for him. He's an underdog. Do you not root for the underdog that's banking on himself? Now, if you're part of the machine and you want to, you know what, you want the UFC, and again, with Francis moving on, the UFC's model is not predicated on Francis sticking around. They don't really care. I hate to tell you guys. That's another reason you should root for Francis. The UFC's fine no matter, they're making their, this exact same amount of money if Francis leaves or stays with their ESPN deal. So why would you not root for Francis? Oh, I don't like that. I don't, what don't you like? He knocks dudes out. Well, I want Cyril to go on to win. I'm with you, man. I think Cyril's going to be a champ. I'm telling you, if you want things to change for the better, you have got to root for Francis this Saturday. And even though all of us are rooting for Francis, I don't know if it's enough for him to win. But what he's fighting for is so much bigger than the heavyweight title. He's fighting for fucking history, and he's going to be the first guy to ever follow in Jake Paul's footsteps and go outside the UFC banking on himself and get these fuck you money fights. That's what we're rooting for, guys. And it's history. It's fucking history. And if you can't fuck with that, you ain't shit. How about that? Um, let's talk about the fight. Easier said than done, isn't it? There's a reason he's an underdog. There's a few things working against Francis. Uh, the number one thing that alarms me, being a big, big Francis fan, he hasn't had much time in the octagon. Even when he fought in the octagon, his last how many chin is under, you know, you're talking about just to give, you know, this is this is probably be, being generous. It's under two minutes, you know. So his last fight was March 2021. It basically went one round. So you got a round, a round in. Before that, he weighed damn near an entire year. He beat Rosenstruck. Remember you guys said Rosenstruck was going to be a tough test for him? That's cool. Uh, he beat Rosenstruck in 20 seconds. In 2020, he spent 20 seconds doing his job. Then, in 2019, he knocked out Junior Dos Santos in basically a minute, minute 11. Before that, he beat Cain Velasquez in 26 seconds. Before that, he beat Curtis Blades in 45 seconds. So in four years, he has spent, I'm going to round up here. He has spent one, two, a little over three minutes inside the octagon. That's alarming. That's alarming. That worries me. Because I I don't think this can be a quick fight for Francis. Um and I, I know he's definitely gotten better uh, after that steep A loss, and he, he's matured. I and I, I don't even know if technically he's gotten better. I know his coaches say that, of course they have to say it, but it has been fucking four years since he lost to steep A. So I would assume he, he's gotten better, but I think he's matured more, which which is an advantage for Francis. So can Francis get him out of there in under a minute again? For sure. What worries me is when that bad boy gets in that third round, fourth round. The fifth round. We know Cyril Ghosn uh, is built to go five rounds. He's banking on himself going five rounds. That's what he likes to do. Um, you look at a lot of his fights, they're not, they're not quick. Matter of fact, he has no quick fights. He doesn't do quick. He does calculated. He does footwork. And um, that's, that worries me the most going into this fight. But on the other side of that, you can say that Cyril Ghosn has never been in a major fight. Yeah, he fought Rosenstruck. It was a UFC fight night. Yeah, he fought Volkov. It was a fight night. It was five rounds. Um, but fighting for the world heavyweight title on a major uh, UFC pay-per-view is a different animal. Francis has done that. And the first time he did that, he was cocky about it. And he got humbled. He got humbled. But he learned from that. And that's why I give Francis the advantage in this fight. Cyril Ghosn hasn't learned. He's had no learning experiences in the in the octagon. So you got to bank on his an experience in the big title fights. Francis has been there. He's learned that. And then also, if you're going to bet on Francis, you also got to bet on, do you guys really think for 25 minutes, 25 fucking minutes in that big cage that Cyril Gahn can avoid one punch from Francis? All we need is one. All we need is one punch if you're a Francis fan. You need one punch on the fucking button. 
in 25 minutes, and he's your world heavyweight champion. He changes the course of every major superstar in the UFC from here on out. I like his odds. I like his odds. I think for Francis, I bet I would be willing to bet that his camp has really focused on conditioning because the best thing about Cyril Gaon is his footwork and he's going to have to cut him off easier said than done. And it's not going to be easy to do early on. It's just not going to happen early on. So Francis has to hopefully corner him, cut him off to be able to land one of those punches. Even in tight quarters, I'll take it. But what we don't, if you're a Francis fan, what you don't want is this fight at a distance. If this fight is at a distance. Cyril Gaon is winning in every way possible on the scorecards with kicks and his, you know, his jab and he's too technical. He's not getting hit. We need Francis to blitz him, which he's going to do. What I do like is Cyril's a big guy. Don't get me wrong, but he doesn't have that God given knockout power like Francis has. So even if Francis were to charge in, and Cyril's going to counter. I'm not worried about him knocking out Francis. Opposed to if Cyril were to rush Francis, you're going to get knocked the fuck out. So the, the, that's also another chip in Francis's corner where he can he can risk a little more, get a little sloppy. You're going to get touched. Now you can put a combo together, a kick to the face, and knock him the fuck out. Cyril's also a big dude, so you don't want to let that happen too often, but we can get away with one or two before your lights are turned off. Francis, you get away with nothing. We need one little mistake. We need one should have zigged when he should have, you know, zagged and he's it, the fight's over and Francis wins. I'm banking on that. I'm banking on the moments too big for Cyril Gone. I'm banking on Francis realizes what he's fighting for. Hopefully, because his learning experience in the Steep Bay fight, that he he does well under this pressure. It's not too much for him, and he comes out on top. I'm, I'm taking Francis uh, via KO under three rounds. And all of you should take Francis via KO. Every one of you should be hoping for that. Again, not because you're a Francis fan or a Cyril Gaon fan, because it's better for every other superstar that's ever going to fight in the UFC. It's life-changing. Because if he fails, all this goes out the window. Can he go to free agency like I told you? Yeah, sure, he can go to free agency. But his, his value is nowhere near. Is 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 Tyson Fury gonna fight, you know, Francis who doesn't have a title shot or a, a heavyweight title belt? No, he's not. All that goes out the window. He has to knock him out. He has to have the belt, and then he has to ride off in the sunset and go test free agency, a la Tyson Fury, Joshua Wilder. That's what we want. I'm nervous already. <laughs> Let's take a little break from me really ranting about the magnitude that Francis faces this Saturday, UFC 270. Let's take a little break because you're going to be watching. You're going to be watching the fight on pay-per-view. You're going to be tuning in to the Cobb Ass Fight Companion with your boy, available only on Thick Boy YouTube. You're going to be tuning in to all that. But you know what makes all this better? If you're betting some money. Yep, you got money riding on it. You got money around UFC 270 this Saturday. Be sure to check out my friends at DraftKings Sportsbook. That's right. I get a special parlay for you guys. They're going to boost your odds. All you got to do is go to the Brendan Shop tab on DraftKings. You will see I have a three-man parlay. All three have to win in order for you to make bank, bro. I got Hadolfo Vieira, Brandon Moreno, and Francis Ngano. If all three of them win, you make bank, and they're going to boost your odds with DraftKings. That's right. UFC 270, there's no better spot to make money with DraftKings. When you sign up, you can boost your odds. When you do the Brendan Shop picks, just click on the tab bar for the Brendan Shop picks. Again, Vieira, Moreno, Francis Ngano, all right? You place your bets. Watch the fist fly this weekend. The heavyweight title is on the line. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or an Indiana 1-800-9-WITH-IT. With DraftKings, enter promo code SHOB or SHOB SHOW. Woo doggy. The, the Thick Boy crew made it through the holiday rush, man. But you can't slack. You can't let your guard down. You got to get shipping to your customers on time, all right, or exchanges. You got to do it. We do it with all the Thick Boy merch, which we have a drop this Thursday. See the coat your boy's wearing. Thick Boy Car Club is coming in hot, all right? But my friends, 
My friends at ShipStation got you covered. Shipping delays, supply shortages, holiday demand last year was a hot mess. Now you're ringing the new year with impatient customers, returns, expensive shipping rates. It's time to switch to a shipping solution that can handle all of this painlessly. We got you, man. Why would you use anything but ShipStation? It's easy. It's convenient. All right. Most e-commerce sellers choose ShipStation. All right. Uh, you can save time because you're funneling all your orders in one simple interface, no matter what you're selling. Manage every order, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, your own website like Thick Boy, from anywhere, even your freaking phone. You save money. Go ahead. Compare it with other carrier options. All right. They're the best, man. You choose the best shipping solution every single time. ShipStation works with every carrier, so you can always find the best fit for you. All right. And also, peace of mind, knowing your orders are handled and you're getting the best rates makes shipping the easiest part of having an online store. You have bigger ideas to think about than all this stuff, man. No wonder 90% of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it for as long as they're in business. It's that freaking good. Ship more and less time with ShipStation. Use the code SHAUB, S-C-H-A-U-B, to get 60-day free trial. That's too much free, no hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, type in SHAUB, S-C-H-A-U-B, ShipStation, make ship happen. I think Brandon Moreno in the co-main event just has Figueroa's number. He uh, he absolutely dominated him that, that, that second time, and uh, it's just Brandon's time. You'll hear, you know, Wonder Boy's the nicest guy, or this guy's the nicest guy in the UFC, or Francis is nice, or DC's nice, Stipe's nice. Nobody is fucking nicer than Bram Moreno. He's too nice. You know when someone's too nice, you think they're gay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're like, what is, what's, what's this guy's agenda here? What's he trying to you do? You thought I was gay for quite some time, too, so. Yeah, I think some comics think I'm gay, because I'm too <laughs> nice. But he's shredded. Yeah, super shredded now. Yep. But that's not his that's issue. Davison. Let's test the guy on the right. But uh, that's not his issue. The issue isn't him being Shred City and having better cardio. His issue is adapting to Bram Moreno yeah. and, the, and the onslaught of the takedowns and the kicks and the punches. So, you know, I'm not well, – I know everyone's like, have you seen how Shred he is? I don't give a fuck about that. They're also flyweights, so you better be shredded. So, yeah. Again, the rest of the card, you don't, you don't worry about the rest of the card. So the card's really not shit, but – uh, Hadolfo is fun too. Yeah, the rest of the cards, whatever, man. But you, you, the co and main event, especially that main event, the magnitude that's riding on Francis's shoulders is so insane. Well, now I'm like super hot. Change the course of the history of all the UFC superstars. Name the last fight you've yeah. had like this that that someone has, has had this opportunity. That's why you got chair for him. All right, what do we got, Jen? All right. I just talked about Francis for two hours. I know. <laughs> I'm like, do you know when Francis was three? That his mom. You know, I was like, that was like, Christ, dude. that was a long time. About half an hour. Of ranting about why about, she went. Yeah. That's good though. I feel like it's important. It is. Uh, so he was, Francis was talking to, I think, Brett Okamoto on ESPN about how his contract, he, how he wants his contract to be. Uh, so he said something like, he's not going to fight anymore for $500,000 or $600,000. And we, he would have to have an open clause to box just to stay in the UFC. It gets dicey. I, I, you know, if, I, if I'm the UFC, you know, I, and again, I know their model's not predicated off superstars anymore in pay-per-views, but I mean, if, if he could come to an agreement where he could still, you know, maintain a career in the UFC and get those fights like they did with Connor, yeah. and the UFC wants him boxing, but my if I'm Francis's uh, agents, I'm going, we're down for this, but what's your cut? Like, how much are you guys taking? That's where it gets dicey. Mm -hmm. So he goes, no, I will not fight for five hundred, six hundred thousand 600000 anymore. Um, I mean, it's over. It's over. I just did this. I took this fight for a personal reason. I want to make sure that regardless, even if it's unfair, I've been wrongly treated. I can make my case to say I've completed the eight fights, but no. The the contract is pretty cool. I, th I mean, It says here that if he does win the, the championship, he would just sit out for the year. And I guess after... A year goes by the ch you know you don't have to be uh your contract's over with basically you have to have three fights or wait out a year so he's like i'll wait out a year uh and that's if he becomes heavyweight yeah champion? if he wins a championship he's just he'll just wait so out he'll fight then, for a year and the contract will be over my thing even with the ufc like i know you don't want to set up presidents here but 
does like does he have to wait out a year? Just can, do you do are you do, are you not making enough money? Like can the guy just move on? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um so he had a five year term, however he said the champions clause in the country all states they should hold the title at its expiration. He would be bound to promotion for one year or three fights. That all makes uh, me think it's optional. Also, yeah, what's interesting too, it's like it's so one-sided towards the UFC, and that's why the biggest organization could have the best lawyers, the best contracts. But how quick was the UFC to give an interim belt to Cyril Gunn? Think you know, it's like they'll just make up these belts. Yeah. Do, do they have before. to wait a year? Do they have to wait three fights? No, but the champ does. Like it's so one-sided. Mm. Uh, Ngano seemed unclear on his status given the contract overall of term. The championship clause at one point saying. He wouldn't be under contract until January 2023 because the global the the global of the UFC contract from the beginning to the end it cannot pass five years. It's confusing. Yeah, it's all confusing. But you said they had the best lawyers. I'm sure they thought about. Oh, all they're stuff. monsters. Yeah. Trust me. All so, right, but all, all all these big businesses that like the NFL has the best lawyers. The UFC has the best lawyers. Fucking MGM, Universal, these big movie Marvel, they have the best lawyers. So you can't you, you you can't fuck them over. You're not gonna be able to get all your shine and just dip out. Like you're not gonna be able to play fucking Iron Man for Marvel and then just dip out and play, you know, a different Thor or something. Shit. It just it doesn't work like that. What else you got? All right, this is pretty cool. So Colby Covington versus Jorge Mazadal. Official to headline UFC two seventy two in March. I love that fight. Hell yeah. Love that fight. So interesting how Masvidal is going to look in that fight. I would assume Masvidal is an underdog in that. Oh, yeah. I mean, so Colby's a big favorite. My th minus three, three, 330 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is one of those fights where if it were to go, you know, past the third and fourth, that means Colby's definitely doing work. But Masvidal has that fuck it mentality where – flying knees and you know where it's something that kobe hasn't had to really deal with before where masvidal has the he doesn't give a fuck if he gets taken down and he's, he's going for broke he's trying to finish you which which you know isn't a bad idea to put some money on masvidal because he does have the power but i'm curious how he's gonna look and come back after getting literally flatlined by kamar usman you know mm -hmm. and you mentioned before too when you fight because they were homies, they were training partners. When you fight that, it's just it's different, right? You guys change your approach. Yeah, because yeah. you know what that guy's really good at. So you, you usually things you would do, you don't because you think he knows what's coming. So, um, you know, I, I, it's been a while, so I think this won't be one of those fights like that. But this fight, the build up, it's just brilliant matchmaking. Oh, yeah, I mean, you know, former roommates, teammates, like this is a great fucking fight. Storyline's awesome. Yeah, the storyline writes its fucking self. Okay, so this is a quick one on Korean Zombie. Um, well, let's do this one first. So after Giga lost, Korean Zombie, not like himself, just tweeted out something like, you know, An hand to the face. Like, yeah, hand to the face. And of course, Giga obviously didn't like that. Well, it comes from, too, that Giga was saying, like, Volkanovski going to take the easy route and take... He, he talks a lot of smack, dude, yeah. But he was like, it's no shade on Korean Zombie, but uh, you look at the, his possible guys he can fight like korean zombie's the easiest one he's gonna go with that uh -huh. he's like he's no shade on he's like but he's ranked i think 10 or something like that he's saying so this is korean zombie no this uh this is a uh, no i'm saying this is that was korean zombie mm -hmm. doing the emoji i'm guessing that's him like firing back at yeah. that i just i never like when fighters shit on other fighters after when they loss. lose yeah especially korean zombie i know it doesn't make sense i don't think korean zombie did that <laughs> You know this. I gotta agree with you. He has a team running yeah, this. Korean Zombie's like you. so respectful. Yeah, that's why we love Korean Zombie. His team clearly isn't. They create so many issues for him. He get you know, you'd think they would learn after Brian Ortega slapped home. I know. Like, why keep doing this, man? And you're fighting for a title, so there's no. We don't exactly. need this. You're you already got what you wanted. So uh, Giga put thank you, uh, thank you, my real supporters. I love you all. I owe you speed comeback speedy comeback mm -hmm. uh, a lot of fake people around but it's okay also fuck you korean zombie be happy with someone's uh loss you cheap fuck yeah you would be upset yeah then i saw 
This is what Zombie posted afterwards too. Calm down and rest. With the sweaty thing. I just don't see Korean Zombie get on Instagram story, restoring this, then putting that emoji. Yeah, I don't, neither do I. I'm not buying it at all. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned that Korean Zombie is now, it's official. That he's going to fight Alexander Volkanovsky. Yeah, it's official. And then we mentioned last week on Below the Belt how Korean Zombie put out a post about his shoulder yeah. and how he's out for a long time. Mm hmm and then again, his not we didn't hear from Korean Zombie. We hear from his manager like, no, he's fine. Yeah. Well, well, March he said he was out for like a year, but <laughs> then you a title fights. shot. No, his shoulder's fucking great, man. Well, I didn't hear him say that. Yeah. So he said well, the shoulder's good. We were planning on fighting late, late in April, early May, which is kind of what I was just the UFC beforehand. Really? Because your fighter begged to differ. This so opportunity came up. And we're ready to go. It's just a timeline a little earlier. Being a fight ready. Being in Arizona, they have great camp there. Facilities, we ready to go. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a tough night in the office for Korean Zombie. And he messed up his shoulder before too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, so this is just Dana White talking about how Henry Cejudo doesn't deserve a title shot right away. And what do you say to, about it? He said he isn't he retired basically. <laughs> right here. Uh, so White on Henry Cejudo said, isn't the guy retired? He's retired, isn't he? I mean, last time I saw him, he was retired. Now he's mad that he didn't get a touch. That doesn't even make sense. Different weight class doesn't make sense. Here's the problem with this is, uh, you know, if Dana doesn't want, again, they don't care if Cejudo comes back. I'm telling you guys with their new business model. But it's very rare people at Dana's level. This is why you admire Joe Rogan at his level. He'll admit if he makes a mistake or if he doesn't know something. Dana doesn't have that capability, I guess, you know, or maybe he just didn't think about it. But when he says, this isn't what we do, you can't be retired and come back in and fight. Well, GSP did that. And he took way more time off than Henry. He's retired, quote unquote, way longer than Henry Sue. So don't say you don't do it or it doesn't work like that because you've done that. Mm -hmm. What you should have said is, we're not into these guys being retired and jumping in different weight classes, getting belts and dipping out. We learned from GSP it was a mistake. We're not going to do that again. Just own it, what it is. Yeah. Or say, mm, he wants too much money. We're just not into it. We're going to do the Korean zombie fight. But don't say it doesn't work like that because anybody who knows the game outside the casuals on ESPN or whatever, they're going to be like, yeah, it doesn't work like that. We've all seen it where it does work like that. We've actually seen it work like yeah. that pretty recently too and there's so many statistics and numbers that go against your argument that does it that's exactly how it works you're just not a henry pseudo fan or you don't want to pay him it, it would be so refreshing if he was like henry's great and it would be cool to be a uh, you know three division champion what he's asking for is crazy you want to pay him that and then also we let a guy who was more retired took more time off than henry pseudo in gsp come back he got the belt and he's never fine again. Kind of fucks things up for us. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're going to pass. You know how cool that would be? Mm -hmm. And then Henry Cejudo's not talking shit. Everyone's like, I get it. But with this, when you go, it doesn't work like that. Every fan's like, what? That doesn't make sense. So I, I don't know why he just can't be real. But again, these, these high level CEO stuff like that, it's very rare they admit mistakes with their open minded. Very rare. Mm -hmm. And he also mentioned that. Why should he be able to jump over, you know, jump the line and just hop in? But he's done that before. Again, yep. I'll go to the history books. Uh, so what about the rumors that Conor McGregor is going to fight Charles Oliveira later this year in the summer? It does work like that. It definitely works like that. There's guys that jump the queue all the time. You, you, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And Dana's a smart guy. And this is a bunch of different things that Cejudo was tweeting about. So Dana, was, White wasn't impressed with the idea of letting Cejudo skip the queue and said, this guy's retired. He's been off how many years now? A lot less than GSP. Uh, he wants to come and fight Volkanovski for Cejudo to retire and think you just ju just be able to come in and jump into any weight division and take on the champion. It's not how it works. It is how it works. <laughs> Sewell protested white claims. There you go. Point to George St. Pierre as a clear example of how it can be done. So if I had blonde hair, blue eyes, or if I was Canadian with an accent, maybe you would give it to me. I defend both belts on like GSP. Facts. I left on top, retired that Monday to give the rest of the division a chance. You are playing out scared that I will win. 
Um, um, here we go. So you put Dana. Uh, so Dana, Dana White isn't interested in having this fucking silly conversation about Henry Cejudo return. See, my thing is, why do you got to disrespect those guys? Like fucking silly. It's not silly. It's the only fight that we wanted to see. I like Korean Zombie. I no, but it's who the one? I wouldn't pay for that. <laughs> is it free? Uh, it's got to be right. It's championship. So, but it, I'm sorry. Um, it's got to be pay per view. Yeah. I mean, uh, do you do you want me to legally stream this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Doing these matchups. Uh, and then Henry. So Dana says, "I'm not interested in having these fucking silly conversations. That's where you offend the fighter." And he put, Dan, I need a break. Honestly, it was getting boring being up TJ, Dillashaw. Dillashaw, I Yeah, I know. I just got to be <laughs> okay. friendly. Dillashaw in under a minute and Dominic Snooze in two. I got married, had a kid, and now I'm rejuvenated. I want to be forcey. If I beat up an old guy at a bar and learn how to river dance, will you give me a shot? Yeah, Good like points. he's given all references to Connor and mm. GSP. And for Dan to say it doesn't work, it's just not good enough, dude. At the level you're operating at, this isn't good enough. These aren't the the early 2000s where everyone's like, okay. No, dude, we know exactly how it works. No matter, for sure. Not only do we know exactly how it works, we've all seen it. And this is why Henry Sudo thought he could do this because you've done it before. This isn't new. If this was the first time, I think most fans would be like, yeah, dude, you've been retired. You can't just jump in. Yeah. But we've seen it. So everyone's like, well, no. What do you mean it doesn't work like this? We, we've seen it multiple times, dude. If they just like, when we let guys who are retired jump in, get the belt and dip out, it fucks. It just fucks everything up. We're not into that. If he, if he wants to come back and take a warm-up fight, then we'd be interested in it. It's all good, dude. <laughs> all you don't good. have to devalue the product. You don't have to talk shit. Call it a fucking silly conversation. You don't have to do any of that. Just be cool, man. You got money. <laughs> be cool, daddy. Yeah, that would be refreshing if he did that. Uh, this was actually funny after Henry posted that. Of course, Connor. He, I think he deleted at this point. He goes, Henry was, Henry Cejudo is a little fart. That's that's all he's tweeted, right? And then this is what Henry came back with. What do you know about farting? You always run out of gas. God, hilarious. And they put uh, X on. Notorious. I have nothing but respect for you. Hopefully, when I see you, we can shake hands. You can do a line off my head. Jesus Christ. Rose are red. Lemon is tart. Henry Cejudo is only a little fart. Interesting. Mm. All right. Uh, two quick ones, just a fight announcements. Misha Tate and Lauren Murphy. That's uh, what weight 14. class? I'm pretty sure 135. Uh, oh, 125, you're right. She expected right. 125, yeah, yeah for Illa against Lauren Murphy. All right. Damn. Love that. Yep. That's been a cut for fucking Misha Tate, man. I know, she's already pretty ripped. Always rooting for that dime, though. And then your girl, Mackenzie Dern versus Tisha Torres. Love Mackenzie Dern. UFC 273, April 9th. I bet she's um, an underdog in that, but that that's a good fight for. Her. Yeah, definitely. Quit giving her these fucking stand up specials don't fucking stop, man. What? They always give her like these tough ass matchups. Oh, for some reason I thought you were talking about comedy for a second. No. Stand up special. Uh-oh. Uh so this is Kevin Holland announcing that he's gonna fight um at one seventy versus Cowboy Oliveira. It's kind of funny. They got me fighting cowboy March 5th, big mouth in backyard in full effect too. I might have to come back in like a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this really him singing? March 5th, yeah. They got me fighting cowboy, yeah. Huh. On the card with Velasky, they got me fighting cowboy. It ain't free. And it's 50 G's. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. The 21 behind me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fun. At least it's a little different. It's different, like, no too. Yeah, yeah I agree. No, I dig it. That was fun. That was cool. Yeah. All right. It's a good fight, too. So we now know who Chad Mendes is going to do his uh, BKFC debut with. And it's a guy named Famez. So I is had to look him up. Is it Famez? I think, I don't know. <laughs> but this is his boxing record. So his name is Joshua Alvarez. His nickname is Famez or Fa Famez or whatever. He's or Famez. He's a Dade County boy. Yeah. So 2-0. Oh. That's pretty good. Then I looked more into it. Uh, he's also an R&B singer. Yes. Right? 
He yeah. lost his last BKFC fight. Though. Is that him on the left? That's yeah, him on the left. Hell and I yeah. looked at his YouTube channel. Hell yeah. Does he have some music? He's got some music. And I just started. Oh, I can't wait. Let's just check this out. But you want that one or the purpose? Uh, where's the purpose? Which one's better? Wait, so I saw a little bit of the, the, oh, the, then the beginning. Oh, the wish I never I stopped it. Okay, please play it for me. Is it good? He's making out. He just be, he's just kissing? Watch. <laughs> A little titty action there. Is that his wife? Does she have a ring on? Uh, how does this not get flagged? I don't know. She's clear. Oh, yeah, that's his wife. Literally a dime piece. Uh, what's your name again? Brittany. Do you say what's your name? Yeah. Just, want to just get a hotel? Yes. Oh, that's not a wedding ring. It's just rings. Yeah, you want to understand. Seems like I have everything under control. Bonafide really video vixen. You I'm into it. I swear I feel alone tonight. Shawty, she be texting me to hold it tight. I gotta touch you, girl, cause it's only right. Dude, it ain't, it ain't bad at all. You could actually sing, yeah. Get inside my zone tonight. I be overthinking like it's only life. I done heard him talking from plenty. You better show me right. Shawty say you different, but baby, you stay. Very Mike Studdish. Like dude, good. I'm into it's not it. Bad, dude. I was ready for a shit show. <laughs> I, I thought you were bringing up no, like no, him no. making out. I was like, oh, this is gonna be a disaster. Mm -hmm. Give me one more. <laughs> I'm into purpose, this fucking right? guy. Famez is crushing it. Famez. Uh, yeah. Give me purpose. Hey, babe. Not mad at the hair, the neck tattoos. You get help him with the sneakers, dude. If you never did me wrong, then I would never turn my back on you. But I'm into this pain. I swear this should be feeling casual. I don't feel the same. See, there's some things I need to let out. VPS is on me, new car, but I don't care now, no. What's my purpose? Tell me what's my purpose. I be crying at night and then be hard on the surface. You don't know what I go through inside my heart. I ain't perfect. I swear to God that I'm trying. It don't help that women hurt me, no. I swear I gotta fill it up. Never even get a car. That's why I can't I get involved. No feelings, no feelings, no. You can pause it, Chin. Mm -hmm. First of all, as far as combat sports go, he's by far the most talented musician. Singer for sure, yeah. Who's Even better? Though. <laughs> production like the videos, Dude, the videos and shit, great like talking about real shit yeah it sounds this great guy's fantastic <laughs> i'm a fucking fan famous famous guy, it's fantastic dude Six thousand views that's bullshit i know he needs some more go fucking watch famous it was great man super talented yeah he's he's like he reminds me of mike stud so mike stud does singing and and rapping right yeah so, okay yeah but yeah i when i saw this i was like this is like a legit R&B singer. Yeah, yeah, dude. And the music's good. Some like depth said, the video's them. great. There's some layers there. Yep. Lyrics we gotta, are good. We got to partner up him and fucking Little Brows. <laughs> I know, dude. Right? For sure. You, him, and Little Brows? Dude. Why not? Famous. Famous. <laughs> I guarantee we get you more than 6,000 views, son. Uh, and with his talent? He's got a cool look, too. Everything. Great right? look. Yeah. Looks good. Has dime pieces in his videos. The music videos, I'm sure he doesn't have a huge budget, but he's crushing those. Yeah, they look great. We got to work on the handwriting of the people there, but whatever. <laughs> And the lyrics are actually good. Yes. Yeah. There's some depth there. You're not talking about like money and bitches yeah, yeah. and cash and this fighting deep. and knockouts. Yeah. The dude has some layers to him. Mm -hmm. I'm in. So that's, that's who. Dude. <laughs> Chad Mendes is fighting. Famous. Well, Chad, you know, I love you. <laughs> I love Famous more now. But uh, Famous, hit us up, man. We'll connect you with little brows. Get get on some tracks with oh, the thick yeah. boy. So that's going to be at Knuckle Mania 2. Uh, February 19th. It's a tough fight for Famous. It's going to be so tough, yeah, it's dude. Tough. Chad hits it's like gonna... a fucking truck. <laughs> oh, my but, God. Uh, Famous, dude, clearly, clearly you can do this R&B thing, dude. Yeah. This music thing. Fuck bare knuckle boxing against Chad Mendez, dude. You can do it. Yes, clearly. you can. It's just the, <laughs> with 6,000 views, it's going to be tough to make it. No, I know. But, but that's now, why we can help yeah, him out. Exactly. Now, start blowing up, hopefully. Chad hits so hard. Dude, he's looking crazy now. Oh, his yeah. quads are so juicy right there. <laughs> um, I wasn't familiar with Nasordin Imamov, but uh, that's who Kev Kelvin Gastelum is going to be fighting next at UFC 273. They're not doing Kelvin any favors. And then, yeah, so he's... Yeah, you you know him because he, uh, he beat Edmund last mm -hmm. one. 
Yeah. And Heinish, it's a tough fight for, for Kelvin. Yeah. Speaking of another tough fight, uh, we talked Kelvin. about this already. Yaroslav Amazov, who's a killer. He's fighting Michael Page, and now it's, our, it's set for Bellator London main event. At least it's in London, though. Yeah. You know, but that very tough fight Wembley. For, for Michael Venom Page. Super tough, yeah. God, they need, they got, Bellator needs Venom to be the face of that, you know? He's, yeah, he's always super exciting. Okay. So, John, uh, not John Jones, Daniel Cormier predicted that if John, or when John Jones goes to heavyweight, he'll lose to both Cyril and Ngano. I mean, you got to take this with a grain of salt, too, yeah. right? Like, with their bad beef, stuff like that. Like, we don't know how he's going to do. Uh, so he was, I believe that John Jones will fight at heavyweight and he'll fight for the belt and he'll lose to Cyril Gunn or Francis. I just think that the time away, the weight difference, those guys being who they are, that's the problem. It's not that John Jones has gotten worse, just that these guys are different level heavyweight. I agree. I, you know, I agree. I just feel like John has more tools than those guys. Um, Again, it's it's styles that make fights. I think John would have an, a better chance of winning against Francis than he would um, Cyril Gaon. I think Cyril Gaon, out of any heavyweight, would be a complete nightmare for John. A guy who can move, um, his athletic ability is quick. He hits harder. He's long. Uh, he has a gas tank. John's attributes at heavyweight are going to be, you know, obviously his fight IQ. Um, his wrestling, especially at the top there, Francis and Cyril Gaon, neither are wrestlers. So Francis can take advantage of that with both of them. But Cyril's definitely tougher to take down with his footwork. Um, you know, as I keep going, uh, it, you know, DC has a point. You know, the, it, we have no idea what John's going to look like. What I don't like is John's been out this long and he's trying to put on weight. Like, I would like John to be around like 230, 235 because – even at light heavyweight, even though he's a bigger light heavyweight, he's not a not, he doesn't knock anybody out. He's not a not one punch knockout artist. His creativity, his takedowns, um, he, he breaks people's will. So he can take that same model and bring it to heavyweight. My issue is when he tries to put on weight and go pound for pound with the heavyweights, he's going to be in trouble. So even though when I first heard this, I'm like, let's DC throwing shade, he's not far off. With with John, I see how big he's like. I'm gonna get to 270. It's like, oh, well then you're fucked, dude. If you're trying to go pound for pound with these big boys who they woke up like that, and you got to do all this training, you're gonna be slower, and your card is gonna be worse, and you're hoping you you, you know, I don't like it. He's, it's gonna make him slower because these guys they they were born like this. So Francis and especially Cyril Gone, like they they couldn't cut to 205. They have to work at heavyweight. So. um I kind of co-sign with DC on this. The more we talk about it, <laughs> okay. yeah. At first, I thought I was just being a hater, but kind of co-sign with him. There you go. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the first of all. Mighty Mouse is fighting a guy named Rod Tang. Rod Tang's like a legend. He's crazy too. So here's a quick highlight. He's the uh, the Muay Thai guy, right? Yeah, he does alternate. He goes MMA and Muay Thai. So they're going to be fighting in Singapore, March 26 on one. And this is just something that. One of the fights that he did. Tang, Kali Long, teeing off. Look at Ron Tang. Ron Tang on a show. That knockdown changed it, though. I think it changed it. Beautiful evasion there from Ron Tang. Yeah, he's tiny. Superb work here, and he bashes himself in the chest and in the face. Jesus Christ, what a fucking savage. from his opponent in the last 10 seconds. They are two 22-year-olds, and now you see Ron Tang's ego coming into play. The beating of the chest, the slapping of the face. The well, he's just he eating that it. shit. He just lets people punch him in the face. It's kind of crazy. And he also, like, he does these great takedowns as well. And he's such a monster. Monster. Yeah, monster. monster. So that's who, that's, <laughs> that's fun DJ's for Mighty fighting. Mouse. And then another cool fight on that card. It's uh, John Lineker. That's a great UFC, fight. knockout artist. John Lineker's guy who left the UFC, and man, he's a monster. Yeah, and Bibiana Fernandez. That's fun. Hold up a sec. Hold up a second. Never mind. So March 26th is for DJ and Rod Tang, and then this one's going to be February 11th. Monster fights. Yeah. Uh, speaking of one, they're saying they're going to give out this thing called the Warrior Bonus. So basically, if you show your Warrior Spirit, they'll give you $50,000. There's a minimum of one each fight, but there's a maximum of like 
Or there's no maximum thing, or maybe five or something like that. They can give out more than one yeah. warrior bonus. And then, now, does a warrior bonus count? Like, if I knock the guy out in 30 seconds, do I get a warrior bonus? If the guy thinks it's war, you know warrior worthy, who's the guy? To him. I think Victor Kui. Victor Kui or Chatri? Ch I assume Chatri does it. The, fires the warrior and bonus. Kui right? I, I oh, yeah, so it's Kui. 50,000 of fighters impressed me the most in terms of throwing the fans. Oh, they're, they're, I thought it was just like showing like chin and like a warrior spirit, but oh, okay. delivering a phenomenal finish. Oh, 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 one championship. You mean a, you mean what the UFC has been doing <laughs> for 20 years? A win bonus? Yeah. The warrior bonus. Oh, hey no, guys, so breaking news. We came up with this insane idea. Wheel word fifty thousand dollars. The exact same. So, UFC so there is one count to a yeah. fighter impressed me the most in terms of <laughs> thrilling the fans. You mean a knockout? Demonstrating incredible warrior spirit. You mean fight of the night? Exhibiting amazing skills. Yep. Delivering a phenomenal finish. Finish of the night. Yeah. Performance of the night. They said they would give it to a loser too, as long as he shows that warrior type of spirit. Yeah. If you, yeah. If, yeah, if you you see five, five of the nights, night, yeah. you both yeah. get 50. so it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> the exact same thing. <laughs> Attention, everybody. I know. No, I like it. The more money for of the course. fighters, great, and it's it's gonna be dope to see who wins those. But I'm just saying, it's not like they're reinventing the wheel here. Mm -hmm. But great for the fighters. Hell yeah, that's dope. But so, also, the UFC's been dope for ten years. Yeah. So you know, Conor McGregor has that new restaurant, the Black Forge Inn. He has like a brick and mortar. Yep. And it's in Dublin. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty dope too. But I guess some random dudes came over and, and threw some Molokov Molotov cocktails at him. Bad criminals though, because <laughs> after hours it appears the criminals made an unprovoked effort to inflict damage to the Black Forge Inn. There was no damage done to any patrons, employees of the Forge, and Mr. McGregor was not on the premises at the time of the incident. Um, yeah. They're still looking for him. And this is from Madness and May. They just I guess they captured one of connor's stories and he just looks crazy jacked here he's a, oh my god that boy is juicy i have no idea what he's saying but he looks like the hulk yeah he's fired up a lot of energy there too yeah it kind of makes you think he's I mean, having some fun you yeah, know my whiskey <laughs> doesn't give you that <laughs> no. energy you guys makes you a little more chill. For that energy maybe take proper and something else huh sometimes Hell yeah. what uh what you call it henry Cejudo said i thought this was super funny this is uh uri faber was talking to ariel about a, a random text that chill would send because chill i guess sends crazy text I, you might have so I had some weird texts too. I don't know. No, I don't send out weird texts. Okay, no, no. To chill sends to them. So oh, yeah. I guess one of them was Uriah just lost this big title fight or whatever. And then uh, this is what chill said. Uh, Uriah, I'm sorry for your loss. I've never lost. Can't relate. <laughs> He's just trying to make it funny. I know. It's just so funny. Yeah. It's, yeah it, I love it. funny, humor, dude. Because when you lose, you get all these texts. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm going to get them next time. Yeah. But it'd be funny to get, uh, you're right. I'm sorry for your loss. I've never lost. I can't relate. <laughs> Which can't would really. make you laugh. Of course. It would like yeah. bring you joy for sure. That's he, great. He's awesome. So yeah, I thought, okay, so Laura Sanko, it was, it was said that she would be on the desk as a color com or a commentator, commentating desk, analyst. But then I watched it and she wasn't on there, but she was on that actual desk desk with, you know, Anthony Linehart. I don't want Karen that. Bryant. Yes. Yeah, we want her Hold actually on. at the booth, right? So are they going to do the booth? No. I mean, maybe in the future, but I thought that was going to happen this time, but it wasn't. So what they do, they just had her, oh, she, like, like, like the like analyst desk. Carol Bryant used to do? Yeah. Karen they Bryant. They still use Karen yeah. Bryant? Mm -hmm. So she was with, there with Karen Bryant and uh, Anthony Smith. Yeah. Br obviously, Bryant's great. Karen Bryant, I've worked with a million times. I love her, but they should. Uh, they need to put her in the booth. Yeah. Like she's the only one who can do in the booth. Yeah. Like her skills speak for themselves. UFC put With her you. in the booth. And this isn't even a matter of being woke and it's 2022 and women the same. I don't play that shit. Skill for skill, talent for talent. She's good as anybody do. Mm -hmm. Put her in the fucking booth, man. That's a shame. I bet you they will though. I think eventually they, they will. She's great. Man. She's yeah. She was, and she fought too. So that's, Put in the cool. fucking booth, you yeah. see. Um, so Brian Kelleher, our boy Brian Boom, he said he actually shirted before the walkout, so he had to go back real quick and clean up. And he won the fight, by the way. He said, "Don't UD. tell anybody." <laughs> Hilarious. And I guess him and Brian had to fart, and then you know. Yeah, it happens, dude. Especially you're nervous. <laughs> I, I mean, it never happened to me, but yeah, I, I feel you. Have you ever had any? I always of, have to pee. 
I was I'm like, fuck. And then once you like, I, like I have to pee so bad. I'm like, dude, you're walking out in literally a minute. You don't uh, have time to pee. Oh, but sucks. then it just goes away. But when you're nervous, you, know, you pee a lot. So you're peeing every fucking three minutes backstage. And you're, not, you're drinking a ton of water. Or you're not drinking. You're trying water? to, but not really. Okay, it's a beast. You never had any type of digestion. Never. Uh, uh-uh, never. Thing uh-uh. Never. Lucky then. Yeah, I'm opposite. Yeah, there's a girl that actually shat in the cage. Yeah, I've that seen girl. that. Yeah. Also, like on this carnivore diet, Rogan sweat. Like he talks about, the only thing was the diarrhea. N- nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, my stool's like a dark black, <laughs> but it's not like <laughs> dark like, black. Rogan, like I was like, well, here comes the fucking diarrhea party. Mm. Nothing. Maybe it takes time. Your my body, body says, adjusts. Nah, man, we got this, fam. We've been waiting for this. We ain't gonna ruin your day with diarrhea. Like Rogan's like, sometimes I can barely. You know, I'll, I'll, I'm worried about shit in my pants. So I was like, all right, well, maybe get some Depends or let, let's load up. Dude, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> but the black? You might want to ask your doctor about the blackness. I think it's just because it's all, all meat. meat, all red meat, no veggies, nothing. Mm. All right, well, hopefully you're good. One ticket to Shredville via black shit. Uh, so this is the last one. This is, uh, this is in Russia. And... So the guy is fighting a girl. The girl is a plus size model. The guy is a porn star, right? Uh, <laughs> right. There's a. This is what I got from this story. So the guy's a porn star. So he was putting her in a choke. Uh, he's a Russian porn star. Yeah, and she's a plus size model there. It says plus size blogger. Oh, she was also a mod- model Hell as well. Yeah. I saw it on a different uh, article. Nothing too. doper than a plus size <laughs> model. <laughs> Yeah, and then you know uh, when you tell your kid they can do anything, and then your kid's mm-hmm. like, you know, if your kid's chubby, she's like, oh, I'll be a model. Now you're like, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, you can. Back in the day, like, absolutely not. You can be a fighter now, too. Now, yeah, whatever you want to do. So as is happening, wait, hold on. Mm-hmm. How did it? How did this get sanctioned? A guy versus a girl? I don't know. It's it's done. To be, it's been done before. Guys oh, that's right. We before. saw that girl yeah. beat the show. That big guy. Mm-hmm. And she, by the way, she won after this. So she's one and one in her career. Okay. <laughs> so I'll play this for you. Some random dude. Didn't like the fact that this guy's hitting a girl and he jumped in and he tried to actually kick him. I'll show you. Does she have any training? Yeah. It doesn't look like it. Did he step over? Yeah, don't hit his back because that does nothing, you know? Defend the all oh, yes. I mean, I can even chip. Oh, he, he, he got stopped though. That guy's probably a friend of hers, right? I bet those Russians beat the shit out of him in the back. Jesus so yeah. Christ. That guy came. He tried to do an actual foot stomp on that guy. That the referee, referee got like him not quick, up in yeah. here. He did Kembe and Matumbo him. Yeah. Not up in here, dude. I mean, if that's your friend. Yeah, I'm guessing it has to be some sort of relation. There's no way you're that passionate about plus size model <laughs> where you're going to jump into fucking like a fan of hers. without not having some sort of relationship <laughs> with her. Also, she, she seemed fine. Yeah, she like, Yeah, fight. she was in an awful position, clearly, because she's a plus size model fighting MMA. But uh, her face wasn't fucked up or anything like that. Weird. Russia going to Russia, man. That's fantastic. Exactly. Is that it? That's it. Great show, guys. Um, Yeah, man. You know the deal. I ranted for damn near 30 minutes on the magnitude that Francis Ngannou has to to fucking win this Saturday, January 22nd, man. You got UFC 270. I don't give a fuck about anybody else. How about that? The main event, Francis Ngannou, Cyril Gan for the world heavyweight title and the magnitude of Francis, the change of the game forever, is on the line. There will be a Calabasas fight campaign, 7 p.m. live on Thick Boy with Brian Callen, Chris D'Elia, and myself. Tune into that. I can't wait. Enjoy the fights. Uh, as far as uh, road date stuff like that, I have one show on the 26th in Los Angeles, California, the Hollywood Improv. That bad bitch is almost sold out. Shop and friends. It's going to be a bunch of monsters on that show. We will sell out. So get your tickets right now. There's 25 tickets left. And then other than that, uh, Sacramento, California, February 24th through the 26th at the Punchline in Sacramento. Tickets for Chicago just went on sale March 24th. 
through March 26th, I will see my boy George out there, who's down to 206 pounds now. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Big George. So Chicago is March 24th through March 26th. Please don't snow. Uh, but yeah, so you got the 26th in Hollywood Improv. You got the 24th through 26th of February at the Punchline Sacramento. And then next Saturday, January 29th, you have the Tough Mudder, 10 a.m., Lake Elsinore. Sign up uh, for the Thick Mudder. You can run with me and my boys, 15K. Promise you to get through it. We're all going to be a team. Help each other out. It's going to be a great time. Come on out next Saturday. And that's it, man. I will see you guys either uh, on tour around L.A. doing stand-up. Or uh, if not, stay safe, stay thick. Love you guys. I'm out.